All right, welcome to Friday. Go ahead and get out your homework. Okay, most people like probability. Probability is fun. All right, now I asked you if you noticed in the class, I said, uh, yeah, the, um, yeah, the answers in the back of the book are all written as fractions. Probability is written as a fraction or as a decimal. However, I ask you to convert those to a percent. Percents are just something that we as human beings are a bit more comfortable with and would like to use. Okay, so uh, if you didn't, that's okay. Um, just make sure you have at least the fraction, but I'm going to give you both the fraction and the percent. So here we go, 2 through uh, 36 evens. All right, number 2 is 1 half or 50%. Uh, number 4 is 1 half or 50%. Uh, number 6 is 1 or 100%. So you're absolutely going to get a number that's less than 7 when you roll one die. All right, number 8. Number 8 is 1 fourth or 25%. Uh, number 10 is 1 fifth or 20%. Number 12 is 1 half or 50%. Number 14 is 3 fourths or 75%. Uh, number 16 is 4 fifths or 80%, 80%. Uh, number 18 is one-fifth or 20%. And that's in a good example there. When you do that probability and I say one-fifth, most people will have to think about that. Uh, but if I say the probability is 20%, you get a really good feel for whether it's likely or unlikely to occur. All right, what are we on, 20? All right, 20 is two-thirds or I'm going to round to the nearest whole number, 67%. Uh, number 22 is one-half or 50%. Uh, number 24 is one-fourth or 25 percent. Number uh, 26 uh, is uh, one-sixth or, I'm going to round to the nearest whole number, 17 percent. Once again, one-sixth, right, versus 17 percent, right? You get a much more feel for the probability when you say it is percent. Uh, number 28, not going to happen. The probability is zero, zero percent. Uh, what are we on, 30 yeah, so the ones with the two uh, game cubes or a paradise, right? Those are the those are the hardest ones to to calculate because just remember, getting a two and a six is not the same as getting a six or a two. Their values are the same, right? They both add up to eight, but it's not the same roll of the dice, right? A, if the first uh, die is a two and the second one is a six, that's not the same as if the first one is a six and the second one is a two. So that's two completely different events. Okay, but they both add up to eight, so that's the that's the difficulty in doing this. You have to think of every single possibility of how many different ways are there, for instance, to roll an eight. Well, there's a four and a four, two and a six, six and a two, three and a five, five and a three, that sort of thing. All right, 30. Uh, 30 is uh, uh, one over 36, and as a uh, decimal rounded to the nearest whole number, or a, a percent rounded to the nearest whole number, it's three percent. Not very likely. And that was the probability of rolling a 12, because there's only one way of getting a 12 if both uh, uh, dies are 6. All right, 32 is 1 over 9, or 11%, approximately 11%. Uh, number 34 is 1 over 18, or I'm around 6%, not very likely. And the last one, uh, number 36 is 4 over 9 or 44%, 44%. There you go. Count up how many got wrong and answer question 1 on the Google Forms. All right, we made it Friday. Monday is a day off. Um, if you need tutoring on Monday, I, I certainly will, will give you tutoring. I'm not taking the day off. I'm going to work. So uh, if you need any help, by all means, call me on Monday. But uh, the goal here is for no one to do any work on Monday. Take a break, and then we'll finish for the year, and then we'll uh, do our semester final reviews, and we'll start taking our semester finals. Remember, the schedule will be uh, on that third week there. Uh, I will review Monday and Wednesday, all right? Uh, you will not take your semester final for math until the following Thursday, right? So your final schedule go, well, uh, that Friday of that third week there is your English final. Then we have a three-day weekend for Memorial Day. We come back on Tuesday. Tuesday is your science final. Uh, see, Wednesday is your uh, Latin final. Thursday is your math final. And Friday, you finish up with your history final. So remember, you're gonna we're going to do the review for math on that Monday and Wednesday of this third week here, and then you're not going to take your test until that Thursday. So obviously, uh, there's a big, big time frame between uh, when we review and when you actually take the test. 
Uh, lastly, thank you, Callie, uh, for um, uh, pointing out a mistake that I made in the previous class when I was calling out answers. I actually looked at, I'm looking at the answers in the book, and I called out the wrong number for one of those. Uh, and she figured it out and sent, sent me an email. Good job, Callie. And then, obviously, as always, when you catch me making a mistake, I give you a point on a test. Here's your homework for tonight. Copy it down, please. Okay, so last class we did probability, and I mentioned the fact that probability was not odds. You've probably heard this before. What is the chance of this occurring? What are the odds of this occurring? What is the probability of this occurring? All three of those are words that we use to describe basically the same thing, calculating the likelihood of an event occurring. Previous class we talked about probability. It's got its own unique formula. Now we're going to do odds. It has its own unique formula. Do not confuse the two. I, I like you, Mary. <sighs> I like you a lot. <laughs> I want to ask you a question straight out, flat out. I want you to give me the honest answer. What do you think the chances are of... Uh, guy like you and a girl like me ending up together well Lloyd that's difficult to say and we really don't hit me with it just give it to me straight I came a long way just to see you Mary just the least you can do is level with me what are my chances not good Good, like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance? Yeah! Now, let's look at what we've done so far in this chapter. Uh, we've arranged items. Remember, that's the combinations and the permutations formula. Combination where order doesn't matter. Permutation where order matters. Last class, we did probability. That's calculating the likelihood of something that, something uh, 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 occurs. Uh, today, we're going to be learning another way of expressing the same idea. What is the likelihood likelihood of a, of uh, that says an even of an event occurring? Okay. This is called odds. Uh, well, this is the, the other way. Uh, it's called odds, and expresses uh, in its in its answer expresses both how many ways there are to win the game, but it also expresses how many ways there are to lose a game. Right, and this is why many people um, uh, use odds rather than probability because they want to understand how many ways to win and how many ways to lose. And I'll just say this, you know, um, as a preface to this. Probability says the same thing, except you got to do a little bit of math. When we say that there is uh, one out of 100 ways to win, well, that means there's one way to win and 99 ways to lose. So it, it, probability says the same thing. However, odds will, or it will specifically tell you the number of ways to win and the number of ways to lose, and that's the big difference. So let's write this down, please. Turns out there's two odds that you will be calculating. One is called odds in favor. You've probably heard this before. What are the odds in favor of the Denver Broncos winning? You know, you've heard that before. Um, odds are, uh, I won't say specifically used in sports, but odds are used a lot of times in sports. You know, what are the odds that, uh, that your team will win? What are the odds that they will lose? And that's the other one. That is called odds against. And both of these say basically the same thing. It's a ratio. That means it's going to be another fraction, right? Uh, odds in favor is the ratio of the winning to the losing. Odds against are the, is the ratio of losing to winning. What are the odds against uh, Mr. C giving you homework, right? Uh, that sort of thing. Now, uh, this idea, and we're going to write this down further. There's a, there's an e, uh, this is just the, the, the first uh, notations here. There's, I'm going to give you the formula here in a second. Um, there are many different ways of writing this formula. Uh, if you uh, open your book and you look at this particular section, they're going to give you a mathematically correct formula. I've just found over the many years of teaching this is that it just adds complexity and, and confusion to students. There's an easier formula to use, and I'll just say it is the same formula, just written in a different form. 
Okay. So we have remember two odds, odds in favor, odds against. Uh, now we're gonna I'm gonna show you what the formula is. Now it says a ratio, so that means it's a fraction. And there's the fraction for odds in favor, right? On the numerator, in the top of the fraction, right? That is how many ways there are to win the game. And on the bottom, it's how many ways to lose the game. Now remember, this compares with probability. Probability is the same numerator, how many ways to win. But the denominator is everything that could occur, both winning and losing. When you do odds, we're only putting the ways to lose on the bottom. That's kind of the difference between uh, odds and probability. Secondly, uh, odds are generally not expressed as a fraction. They're expressed in colon form. Remember colon form when we, when we did uh, uh, ratios, right? So uh, the, in colon form, it's win, colon, lose. And that would be the number of ways to win, you know, colon, the number of ways to lose. Right? Hopefully that's not too confusing. Odds against, we just flip the fraction over. So instead of being win to lose, it's lose to win. Same thing with the uh, colon form, lose to win. So there isn't much difference between this and probability. There, it, there is a mathematical difference, certainly. But the idea of what you're, what you're mentally going through to calculate the answer is fairly uh, similar, fairly similar. You just need to remember in probability the denominator is everything that can happen. And in odds, it's, it's, it's different. Okay, we're going to play the same games as we played before. we got the spinner game, we got cards, we have uh, rolling die, that same, same games, okay? Uh, but now we're going to calculate the, uh, it using odds instead of probability. All right, so a couple quick examples. So here's the spinner game. Let's see. We've got a spinner. There's six numbers. There's some white areas. There's some dark areas. And let's read what the question says. It says, what are the odds in favor, all right, so we're going to do the odds in favor of landing on a dark area? So we look at our resource card uh, on our formula. It says odds in favor are ways to win over ways to lose. Okay, so let's see. What is the game? The game is landing on a dark area. So how many sections are dark? There are four sections that are dark. That's how you can win the game. How do you lose the game? Well, if winning the game is landing in a dark area, then losing the game will be landing on a white area. How many white areas are there? There are two. Remember, if this was probability, this would be 4 over 6. Okay, But this is now odds. Now, I do want you to reduce the fraction. So 4 over 2 would reduce to 2 over 1. We wouldn't say 2. We would say 2 over 1 because, remember, the uh, odds express how many ways to win over how many ways to lose. And then lastly, I'll just say uh, odds are almost always expressed in colon form. So 2 to 1 odds, 2 to 1 odds. And these are odds in favor because, remember, we could calculate this as odds against. So let's do that uh, same, same problem for odds against. Same problem except odds against. So we look at our handy-dandy ratio. Odds against are ways to lose over ways to win, right? Uh, well, let's see. How many ways to lose? To lose would be landing in a white area. There's two of those. Ways to win would be landing in a, a dark area, right? That's four. That's one half. Remember, we want to express this in colon form, so one to two. So there's one to two against, right? One to two against uh, winning this game, right? There's only one way, one way to lose. There's two ways to win. Okay, reduced. Okay, quick note. Uh, odds in favor, right? Two to one. Odds against, one to two. They are, we, uh, I want to say, inverses of each other. Um, we would say in fraction form, they are reciprocals of each other. It's just the fraction flipped, right? It's the ratio flipped. So quick note, if you're doing odds in favor or odds against, and it's the same problem, right? What, what you define as winning is exactly the same. You don't need to do it for the second time. You can just um, create a reciprocal of the fraction or the ratio and get to the answer. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. All right, let's do another one. Uh, what are the odds in favor? All right, odds in favor are ways to win over ways to lose. Of landing on a one or a six, one or a six. Well, how many ways are there to get a one or a six? Well, I notice there's only one one and one six, so there's what, uh, two ways to uh, win this game? I land on a one or a six. Okay, how many ways are the lose? Well, what what defines losing? Not landing on a one or a six. So there's what four ways I land on a two, three, four, or five. That's how I lose. If this was probability, that bottom number would be six. Okay, reduce the fraction. 
write it in colon form and you're done. One to two. So there's one to two odds of uh, landing on a one or six. Okay, what are the odds against? You just flip that around. They're two to one odds against. Okay, you ready to do one by yourself? This isn't too bad. All right, go ahead and do number four and then answer uh, the question number two on the Google Forms. All right, let's see. First one, uh, what are the odds in favor? Odds in favor are win over lose of landing on an even number. How many even numbers that would make you a winner? How many even numbers are there? There are, let's see, two, four, six. There are three even numbers. How many ways to lose would be a non-even, an odd number. There are, let's see, one, three, five. There are three odds. So we have uh, in colon form, right, after you reduce that fraction, three over three reduces to one over one. So we have one to one odds. You'll see this a lot in sports, right? When the teams are evenly matched, we say there's one-to-one -one odds, right? Uh, so you're 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 likely you're as likely to win as you are to lose. If this was probability, this would be 50% probability. So one-to-one -one odds equates to 50% probability. Okay, let's see. Uh, what are the odds against landing on a white number? The odds against. Remember, odds against are lose over win. Odds against of landing on a white. Landing on a white number means uh, you've won this, right? So uh, how many ways to win? we got to land on white. There's, what, two of those, which would leave, what, four ways to lose, right, and two ways to win, okay? Uh, typically, odds against are the ones the, is the hardest one to wrap your head around. So just remember ways to – I always calculate ways to win first. Uh, the, the problem itself will define how to win. What are the odds against landing on a white number? So white number means win, right? Uh, your odds against, that means how many ways are there to lose that game. There are four ways to lose versus two. That reduces to two over one. So two to one odds against. So you're more likely to lose this game because lose is bigger than win, right? Two to one. Uh, then you are, you're more likely to lose the game than you are to win. Starting to make sense? How about we play a different game? So we just played the spin game. Let's play. All right. This looks like a new game. This is the card game. This is the card game, except it's not played with cards. It's played with a bag and something that goes inside the bag. I don't know why mathematicians like marbles, but you'll see in probability the marble uh, example all the time. This is just the card game, right? It's drawing at random a certain object. It could be a deck of cards, drawing a card at random. Um, or it could be, in this case, drawing a marble from a bag. So we're drawing a marble from a bag. So let's see, what's in the bag? It says it contains three red, uh, two blue, uh, and four green, uh, and one yellow. Uh, what are the odds in favor? Let's see, odds in favor, win over lose, of picking a red marble. So if we reach our hand in there, how many ways are there to win? Well, what defines win? Win means that you're grabbing what kind of marble? A red marble. There's three, so there's three ways to win, right? Well, how many ways to lose would be how many, oh, that would be drawing a green, a yellow, or a blue. So how many green, yellow, or blue are there? There's four green, plus one yellow, that's five, plus two blue, there's seven. So three over seven, that's already fully reduced. So in colon form, that would be three to seven, three to seven. So let's see, there, there's more ways to lose than there are to win. So not very good odds, that's how we express that. Remember, you would like your uh, number of ways to win to be larger than the number of ways to lose. And then, then the odds are in your favor. Right? Starting to make sense? You've probably heard those words your entire life. Now you see the math behind those words. Right? Okay. Let's do another one. Same game. Now remember, this equates to the card game, you know, drawing things at random. Uh, sometimes they will have um, letters, and they put letters in the bag, and they say you're drawing these letters at random. It's the same game. So same number of marbles, same colors. Oh, what's the odds in favor? All right, odds in favor, remember, is win over lose of picking a yellow or a green. Yellow or a green. So yellow or green defines winning. How many yellow or green marbles are there? Is it one, two, three, four, five of those? So if I don't draw a yellow or a green, I lose the game. So how many ways to lose? That would be red or blue. There are three red, two blue. So that's five. So five to five, which is one to one, right? So you are just as likely to win this game as you are to lose. One to one odds, right? 50% chance. That's the probability is 50%. Uh, but odds would be one to one. Odds would be one to one. Okay. All right. Uh, try these two all by yourself and answer question number three on the Google form.
How'd you do? All right, let's see. The first one, let's see. It's odds and favor, so that's win over lose. It's the same game we've been playing, so let's see. What defines winning? Uh, picking a blue marble defines winning. So how many blue marbles are there? There are two. Uh, what defines losing? Drawing anything that's not blue. Let's see. Four green plus one yellow is five plus three red is eight. So eight ways to lose. That's one-fourth reduced. So one to four are your odds in favor. So one to four. Good odds or bad odds? Bad odds. There's only one way to win, but there's four ways to lose, right? Okay, and the second one, uh, this is odds against. So remember, it's just the fraction flip. Let's see if it's the same game. Same game or different game? What are the odds against picking a yellow? All right, so yellow defines winning, right? So let's see. How many yellow marbles to win? There are one. How many other marbles? That would be how many ways to lose. Let's see. Four green plus two blue. That's six plus three red. That would be nine. So nine ways to lose. One way to win. Nine to one against. You are way more likely to lose this game than you are to win. There's nine ways to lose. Only one way to win. Not a very good game to play. You want to play another game? Okay. So this is uh, this is a new game. You guys, uh, probably your parents, probably you do it on your phone as well too. Hey, is it going to rain today? Is it going to snow? Right? You open up your your um, uh, phone or you watch the news, go on the internet, and it tells you what is the probability of rain or snow. And that's probability. We're going to be doing odds. We're going to be doing the odds. So here we go. Let's be weathermen for a day. So let's see. The first question says there's a 30% chance of rain today. What are the odds? That would be odds in favor. So if it says what are the odds and it doesn't say favor or against, right, it means in favor, right? If it's odds against, it'll say odds against. But if it just says what are the odds, that means odds in favor. What are the odds so that it will rain? So remember, odds in favor or win over lose. Well, how in the world do I do this, right? Well, just remember, if there's a 30% chance of rain, 30% chance of rain, 30% as a decimal is... 0.3, just moving the decimal place twice to the left there. So 0.3. So there's a 0.3% or 0.3 uh, or 30% chance of rain today, right? What are the odds that it will rain? That it will rain. That means winning. You're trying. You want it to rain. What are the odds that it will rain? So winning would be defined as raining. Well, there's 30% chance of a rain, right? That's what 0.3. Uh, so what are the odds that it'll be sunny, right? Well, that would be the how many, if it's sunny, you lose. Well, if there's 30% chance it rains, then there's a 70% chance that it won't rain. That's 0.7. Makes sense? Uh, so to get to your final answer, let's just multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator by 10. That moves the decimal place once. So 3 over 7, so 3 to 7. What are the odds that it will rain? 3 to 7. 3 ways to win, 7 ways to lose. Not likely that it's going to rain. Okay, how about the other one, odds against? Remember, odds against or lose over win. Remember, what it tells you for the odds against are always the way to win. So 60% chance of rain. What are the odds against raining? 60% defines winning. So the 0.6, right, would go on the bottom. That's how many ways to win. What goes on the top? Well, 60%. What's left over? 40% or 0.4. Do you understand where I'm getting the 0.4 and the 0.6? All I'm doing is converting 60% to a decimal. If there's 60% chance of raining, that means there's 40% chance of sun or non-rain, right? Could be cloudy, I guess. Um, same as the previous one, move the decimal place once, so 4 to 6. we got to reduce this fraction here, right? So 2 to 3. So 2 to 3 odds against raining, odds against raining. So more likely... Uh, that it uh, will be uh, um, that it will rain, right? There's three chances that it will be rain and two chances that it won't rain. Okay, those are the odds against it raining. So less likely, it's probably going to rain today. Uh, once again, odds against are typically what give students the most challenging issues. Most people get odds in favor, but the odds against, I'll just say, remember they they forget where to put the the information that they're given, in this case, the 60%. Remember that 60% will define the win, right? And that always goes on the wherever it says to win. All right, we need to do another one of these, right? I'll, I'll walk you through this one. So there's a th ooh, 30 35% chance of snow today. Snow today. What are the odds that it will snow? So if it doesn't say odds against, it's odds in favor. So win over lose. Remember that 35% 
chance that it will snow are the number of ways to win. So what, 0.35 on the top? Well, what's left over from 100%? Not 75, but 65, right? So 0.65 on the bottom. Don't move it one decimal place this time. Move it, that's right, top and bottom by 100. So move it two decimal places. So 35 over 65. Can that be reduced? Sure, by 5. 5 goes into 35 seven times. 5 goes into 65 a bunch. Turns out 13 times. So 7 to 13. So it is 7 chances to uh, snow, 13 chances for no snow. So most likely not going to snow today. All right, this, uh, the next one is, once again, odds against. Remember, odds against or lose over win. Remember, the information that you'll be given is th what defines winning, 20% chance of rain. So 20% chance means that that's the win. So 0.2 on the point two on the bottom, what would go on the top, right? What's left over from, from 100%, 80%, or 0.8. So 0.8 on the top, 0.2 on the bottom. Move the decimals over. Reduce the fraction. Uh, so we wouldn't say four. We'd say four to one, four over one, or in colon form, four to one. So four chances that it will not rain. One chance that it will rain. So it's likely, likely not going to rain today. Okay, four to one odds. Four to one odds. Let's so we did what two or three games. We did three games. One more game today. One more game. So this is the more challenging one, the last one we did for probability as well, and that's rolling two cubes, right? Rolling two dice. All right, so uh, here's another visualization. This has been in your book, if you've noticed. Um, they have a horizontal and a vertical. In the horizontal, they write one, two, three, four, five, six. That represents all the uh, um, uh, possibilities that when you roll one die, you can get a one, a two, three, four, five, six. And then vertically for die two, they do the same thing. They write one, two, three, four, five, six. And then where those two intersects, die one and die two, like for instance, this dot right there represents a single roll. So that roll right there represents on die two, you have a one, and on die one, you have a one. This dot right here says that on die two, you got a one, but on die one, you got a two. This dot represents on die one, you got a one, and on die, sorry, on die two, you got a one, and die one, you got a three. So how about this dot? This dot represents that you've got a 3 on die 2 and a 2 on die 1, okay? So when you complete this chart, that's a lot of dots, right? I'm not, I'm not claiming you have to make this chart. I'm just saying this is the interpretation of the chart that's in your book. This means that there are, let's see, 6 by 6, that's 36 dots. That represents all the possibilities when you roll a pair of dice, right? There are 36 different things that can happen. Each one of those blue dots represents one of those. And those dots represent a number, okay? For instance, the last number there, the last dot that I drew there, represents die 2 has a 6 and die 1 has a 6. That's rolling a 12. No other dot there would represent a 12. There's only one way of getting a 12. Both die have to be a 6, okay? This is what, and I, and I did this last time, this is called the sample space. The sample space is just a visual drawing of everything that could occur when you roll some dice, okay, or, or whatever the, the game is that you're playing, okay? And my claim is that this uh, sample space right here, this is on page, well, it's written a couple different times. Um, on, it's on the top of page 410. It's also in the previous section we did as well, too, okay? And, and you may want to have that open so you can visually look at it while you do these problems. All right, so here's some odds here uh, for rolling uh, pair of dice. All right. Two game cubes are rolled. What are the odds? Notice it doesn't say odds again, so it's odds in favor. That's win over lose of rolling a 10, of rolling a 10. Okay. Now you can look at the chart, right? Or you can think this out. How do you how do you get a 10 if you roll two dice? Well, one of them can't be a 1, can't be a 2, can't even be a 3. The smallest number that one of them could be would be a 4. If you roll a 4 on die 1 and a 6 on die 2, you have a 10. Well, there's one way. Is there another way? Well, if you roll a 6 on die 1 and a 4 on die 2, that's not the same. 4 and a 6 is not the same as a 6 and a 4. Those are two different ways of getting a 10. So there's two ways. Is there another way? 
Yeah, five and a five, right? So that means either one of the die has a five on it. So that's your third way. So it ends up being three ways of getting a 10. Three ways of getting a 10, right? How many ways are there to lose? Well, if we were doing probability, we would write 36 right there on the bottom. We're not doing probability, right? We're doing odds, and odds are the number of ways to lose. So if there's three ways to win, there's 36 total things that could happen. 3 minus 36, I said that backwards, 36 minus 3, 33, there's 33 ways to lose. Those two numbers add up to the sample space. 3 and 33 add up to 36. Three ways to win, 33 ways to lose. Reduce that fraction to 1 to 11. There's one way to win, there's 11 ways to lose. Not very good odds. All right, last one. Two game cues are rolled. Roll. Remember, there's 36 things that could happen. What are the odds against? All right, odds against is lose over win. Against rolling a 4 or a 7. All right, this one's a bit more challenging to calculate. 4 or a 7. Let's calculate how many ways there are to win if it's odds against a 4 or a 7. So that means win would be a 4 or a 7. How many ways are there to roll a 4? Well, let's count them out. 1 and a 3, or a 3 and a 1. A 2 and a 2. Right? Okay, that's it for four. How about a seven? Uh, a one and a six, or a six and a one. A two and a four, or a four and a two. Uh, a three and a four, or a four and a three. I'm counting, I'm counting nine there, right? So there's nine ways to win. Remember, there's 36 things that could happen. 36 minus nine is 27, so 27 ways to lose. All right, once again, how did I do that? Uh, four and seven defines win. So let's see, there's a one and a three, or a three and a one, or a two and a two. That's three different things. Where did I get the other six from? Well, that's how you can roll a seven. A one and a six, or a six and a one. Uh, a two and a five, or a five and a two. And a three and a four, or a four and a three. That's nine different ways of rolling uh, a four or a seven. Uh, we got to reduce that fraction. Uh, divide by what? Uh, nine. Uh, that would give me a three over one or three to one odds against uh, a four. Remember, uh, win is the is that number there on the right. So one. So three ways to lose, one way to win. Not likely that you're going to roll a four or a seven. For those that are, all of this is now swimming around in your head. Remember, you can always rewind, watch this video a couple times, or, or play it while you're doing your, your homework. Uh, I did want to show you the differences between uh, probability and odds. So probability at the top there, odds in the bottom. So let's just have one event. I'm going to roll one die, one die, and we're going to calculate the probability of rolling uh, a roll that's greater than or equal to three, greater than or equal to three. That means a three, a four, a five, or a six. That's how you win the game, a three, a four, a five, or a six. If we're doing probability, remember probability are ways to win over everything that could happen. So a three, a four, a five, or a six for probability, that would be, what, four ways to win, and there's six things that could happen. So four to six, right, four over six, uh, we do that as a percent, we get about 67%, right, two, two over three. Uh, if we do odds, though, we get different numbers. Remember, odds and favors are win over lose. Notice that uh, the number of ways to win doesn't change between probability and odds. There's still four ways to win, but there's two ways to lose. Remember, the top and the bottom add up to all of the outcomes, right? That's the kind of the relationship between odds and probability. So four to two, which would reduce to two to one, right? Two to one odds, okay? So two, two to odd, odds to win, so that's pretty good odds. You're likely. That also matches up with the percent there, 67%. So yeah, that gives you the impression you're likely to get this. Odds against, remember, or lose over one, it's just the thing reversed. So we don't even need to do that calculation. We just take the ratio and flip it. So 1 to 2, right, would be the answer, 1 to 2. Okay? Makes sense? I just wanted to show you that so you can compare the difference between probability and odds. Okay? All right. Um, there's a good chance that some of you may run into problems with this. Uh, it is confusing, especially if this is the first time you've ever seen this. For those of you that have seen this, this is old hand, or this is stuff that you've done before. Uh, it's pretty much a review. Nothing new so far. Uh, we will get into the new stuff here as we continue onward. Okay, uh, so good luck with your homework. It's Friday. Remember, no class on Monday, so I'll see you guys on Wednesday. I like you.
I'd like you a lot. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Straight out. Flat out. And I want you to give me an honest answer. What do you think the chances are of a guy like you and a girl like me ending up together? Well, the way that's difficult to say, I mean, we really don't... Hit me with it. Just give it to me straight. I came a long way just to see you, Mary. Just the least you can do is level with me. What are my chances? Not good. Yeah!